What is going on everybody? My name is Chris and today I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the Mavic Mini from a total drone newbie. This is my Galaxy S10 Plus and this is the Mavic Mini. So I've been using this drone for a few months now and I wanted to give my thoughts as somebody who really doesn't know all that much about drones. Uh, I've watched a lot of other YouTube videos about this drone specifically and tons of other drones. One person I really like is Billy Kyle. If you've never seen him, I like watching his drone videos. So this is my first kind of like legit real drone. I have had some smaller drones, uh, you know, just little fun ones nothing with too big of a camera or anything. And I bought this to use for YouTube and there were a few things that I found pretty surprising um, that I thought other people would appreciate. If you're thinking about picking this up or you're interested in this drone, I think a beginner has a much different perspective because when you're more of a pro or a regular drone user, who this might be your second, third, or fifth DJI drone, you kind of lose perspective on what it's like to kind of pick these up. Um, for example, one thing, when I first grabbed this, I couldn't even figure out how to turn it on because, you know, I should have read the manual to be fair, but I'm used to just picking up electronics and using them. And to turn it on, it's very simple. You click once on the power button and then you hold, and then it turns on. And now, should I really be turning this on while this little guard is over the camera? I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, I didn't read anything about that, uh, so I'll just turn it off. So I picked up the Flymore kit, which gives you, of course, the drone. With this case, it comes with three batteries. So one I have in the drone, and two of them are in this battery charging case, which is really nice. You can charge all of these at once via micro USB. And you also get this controller, which also charges via micro USB. And they give you two sets of these little thumbsticks. And I bought the Fly More because I figure, you know, you have to have more than one battery flying a drone around. They use a lot of battery, they die really fast. Well, in my experience so far, um, I haven't used it a ton, but the few times I've used it to film, one battery has been enough. This battery is easily lasting over 20 minutes, uh, closer to 30 minutes for me most of the time. But if you're maybe just doing this as a hobby, for fun, or you wanna save a little money, you could get away with a single battery. Now, flying this thing as a beginner is insanely easy. It is so easy to fly this thing. It does lack uh, sensors besides on the bottom. There are no sensors around the drone, so it will fly into things and crash. Uh, it will fly up into things and crash if you're not careful. So you want to be able to see it if you're flying it low. And if you fly it high, you just want to make sure it's high enough and you're really aware of your surroundings. One thing I did hear from a lot of YouTube videos is look out for power lines, and I was being really careful about this. Uh, but I came really close to some power lines right outside of my house. You can see in this clip, I was filming and it was during this, you know, snowstorm and I couldn't see out of the car. Of course, it's dark out. I couldn't see the power lines and I fly up and all of a sudden just in the camera view, bam, you see these power lines and I panicked a little bit and I was like, whoa, I need to get away from those. I don't want to touch those. I don't want to interact with them. So I quickly tried to move the drone away from these power lines and then bam, once again, I'm even closer to them. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. So I just kept the drone at the same level, moved it off to the side, came much lower, and I never went any higher for the rest of that night. You are supposed to be really careful flying at night, um, but I figured, oh, I'm right outside my house. There's nothing here. I'm in the middle of the woods. And it's just, you know, even though I know those power lines are there, it really caught me off guard. Another thing that surprised me about this is, you know, you have the little gimbal here and gimbals are very sensitive. And so I always take this off before I turn it on, except for earlier in the video. Even taking this off now, I've done it a ton of times. I am so worried about ruining this little gimbal. You kind of pry up here and then you release it and just getting it off without touching the camera is really difficult. And I haven't had any problems, you know, there's nothing going on with that. Um, and now if I turn it on, you can see it kind of calibrates the gimbal, moves the, uh, blades a little bit 
And definitely not going to turn this on with the dogs in the background. This scares the crap out of dogs, if you didn't know that. They hate these things, which is no fun because I would like to get some cool footage of them running around. So in terms of the controller, really nice. Again, really easy to use. You can see I have the drone connected here, so it's pointing at me. And flying with this is super, super easy. Uh, another thing that I eventually figured out through watching different videos is if the drone is directly above you, this is how you want the antennas. The flat part of the antenna should be pointing at the drone. So if you're flying it forwards away from you, you then push these up and then that is what is facing the drone. And you can go pretty far and luckily there's a lot of safety stuff on here for you. If you screw up, which I did one time, I got out of range and luckily I had set my home. That's something you wanna do for sure is tell the drone where to return to if it loses connection. And I had set my uh, altitude. So the drone went up to 200 feet and then it returned to me and uh, that saved me because I had lost connection and if I hadn't set that it wouldn't have come back. Now that's another thing I wasn't expecting is when I was flying out wind is like huge especially with this you know tiny little drone it isn't very heavy so the wind really really affects this thing and when I was flying out it was going out at like 20 miles an hour or something and when it was flying back it was flying back at maybe five and I put it in sport mode and it didn't get much faster and I was like, what is going on? And I didn't realize, but it's because the wind was pushing the drone away from me. And so it did make it back. I had plenty of battery and everything. Um, but if my battery would have been low or anything like that, I mean, it would have been gone. It can be really easy to lose these things, um, even with all the safety stuff. So you gotta be really careful with that. So as far as filming, uh, getting your shot or getting your pictures, it's very easy, especially uh, for video. You have these different modes up in the top left of the app. And my favorite mode by far is the CineSmooth mode which basically just makes the drone movements really slow and really intentional rather than in sport mode when the drone's kind of darting around, uh, the video doesn't look too good. In CineSmooth, it really smooths out what the drone's doing so your footage looks really good and you can really tell that it's on a gimbal. And so that's really easy for getting your shot. But the hard part about using this thing that I didn't realize is, you know, you really are involved here. So for me, when I'm filming like about my car, if I wanna be driving my car or using my car or doing anything, then I'm not really free to be using the drone. And you really, this is like a two-handed, dedicated operation you're doing here. So if I want to film my car doing something, it's impossible for me to do by myself, especially because this drone doesn't have active track and it won't follow stuff around. And I think that's because I've heard other people say it's the lack of sensors. I wish they'd just add it and let me, you know, do it at my own risk if I want to risk uh, it bumping into something because it doesn't have those sensors. Because uh, as is, it's very hard for me to do this stuff by myself. Now, the good thing about this drone that is amazing for filming by yourself is it does not move. When you stick it in the air, it just sits there. And so if you look at this clip, I did a zero to 60 test with another car. If you're not familiar, the Model 3 got like a DLC where you could download more acceleration. And the silver car has more acceleration and then my darker car doesn't have it. And so we were comparing the cars. And so what I did is I just flew the drone up above us and got it lined up and just left it there. I put the controller down in the passenger footwell and then I was like, all right, I'm ready, let's go. And the drone just sat there, we drove away, we drove back, and then I brought it back down. Um, so in terms of that, if you need a still shot where the drone doesn't need to be moving, it is really easy and really nice to do. Another thing that I didn't expect is this thing is pretty sensitive in terms of its flight conditions. So I have some winter footage here that you can see, you know, flying around in the snow. And the drone is not very happy when it's cold. You get all kinds of warnings on the controller about the battery's too cold and the drone's too cold. And um, it's also so sensitive to wind, which in the winter, there's pretty much always a little bit of wind blowing. And I don't think I've flown this thing once yet where it hasn't complained about the wind. And I don't know if it's just it being cautious or this is how all drones are, or it's just because it's so light. But uh, it's pretty crazy to me that I haven't had a single day, like I've gone out and been like, oh, it's not very windy, this should be perfect. And the thing's complaining about wind. And, and you know, I know as you get higher up, there's more wind. But, you know, where I was standing, I didn't feel any wind. So that was a little disappointing and unexpected, but it's another thing to look out for. The app is pretty good about making sure you're not stupid uh, and telling you everything you need about the battery, the location, the wind, the temperature. Um, so as long as you listen to the app, you should be okay. But I am tempted all the time to really push it and not really listen to the app because it's constantly yelling at me about the conditions and I just don't take it as seriously because it always has a complaint. The video quality of the drone is really good in my opinion. It's just over 1440p, so you don't get 4K, but uh, YouTube, if you're doing YouTube, uh, compresses the crap out of stuff anyway. And so I render everything in 4K and upload in 4K, 
and uh, that gives you much better quality than uh, uploading in 1080p. And I find that the YouTube quality is just great. Uh, the colors are a little dull in my opinion, but I think that's just because I'm kind of like a photography and videography noob, and I just want everything to be bright and eye-catching all the time. Um, but overall, the quality, in my opinion, is really good. Photography is fine. I don't really take too many pictures, um, but the few pictures I have taken have turned out really nice. Uh, I think they look really good. Again, I don't have much to compare it to. This is my first kind of real legit drone like this. And I am definitely not spending a thousand dollars on a drone. Don't get me wrong. I've been really tempted, but I've never been able to kind of push myself to do that. Uh, so this was 500 and even spending $500 honestly for me was difficult. Uh, the video I bought this for, I knew would be a big video. I knew it would get a lot of views. Um, and I was hoping that one video would pay for the drone and it didn't, it almost did. Um, but it didn't quite, so I pretty much have made my money back on this through YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber and you know you're going to get at least a decent amount of views over the next, you know, few months after buying this, then it's kind of a no-brainer, I suppose. But if you're just buying this for fun or hobby, that's obviously a very personal question. For some people, $500 is nothing. Uh, for me, $500 is a pretty significant amount of money, and I would not be buying this uh, for fun as a toy. Now that I do have it, though, it is fun for me, and I do uh, try to fly it around when I get a little time and just kind of look around and take some pictures and videos. If it's worth $500, um, in my opinion, I think for what you're getting, I really appreciate um, how easy it is to fly. The controller is really nice. Uh, the video quality is good. I really hate the lack of active track though um, and no sensors around it, especially because again, this thing is on the cheaper end of DJI drones. And so you're going to get a lot of newbies buying this. You would think they would have tried to cram some sensors in, but I know they were really limited by this um, ultra light 249 grams there that they really wanted so people didn't have to register with the FAA. I have registered one drone before I do have this older drone that's really big. I don't know if it's changed. This was a few years ago that I did it, but that process was really easy. I did it online in, I don't know, five minutes and it cost me $5. So I'm not sure why anybody cares that they have to register it. Um, but I guess it was nice to just go out and fly it and not worry about it. So going back to some of the pros uh, and some of the regular drone users you'll see on YouTube, uh, portability is something that they're toting with this. And, you know, I get that it's small. You know, I showed, showed it next to my phone in the beginning of the video, but it's still a little bit cumbersome in my opinion. This case is nice and, you know, everything's here. This gives you everything. You can fit all your cables in here, the drone, the controller, all the batteries. Um, but it's, you know, I mean, you still need room for this. It's not like you can put this in your pocket or something. So let me walk you through what it's like to get set up with this drone. So say I just got to where I want to film or I'm at home or whatever. So here it is. This is how I keep it all the time. Uh, I do usually keep one battery in the drone. When I finish filming, I just take whatever battery I had out and I swap it with a full one and then charge that one back up. So I've unzipped and now I have to take the drone out. And this may seem a little ridiculous that I'm complaining about it, but I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So you got to unfold it. These arms have to come out first and then you can do the bottoms here. I'm going to be careful. And then I would take my gimbal cover off, which I'm going to leave on because I'm not actually going to turn it on this time. So there drone is ready. I set that down. Now I have the controller unfold this, not all that big of a deal. So I can set this down now. Then this is where it gets a little annoying. I use the Galaxy S10 Plus and my phone doesn't fit in the controller with the case. So I then take my case off my phone and I have to be stupidly careful because I'm scared that I'm going to drop it. And you got to put your phone here and it is a little difficult. Um, I'm, I'm more used to it now, but especially when you're new, you really are fumbling with this and then plug this in. not being dramatic I really like it's it's uh, it takes me a second to get everything ready um, and then you turn this on and you would turn the drone on and then you click the app and the app usually connects right away but sometimes I'll have problems where the app doesn't want to connect to the drone and I have to restart it that's pretty rare but it's happened a few times um, and then you're ready to go so it's not that big of a deal but at the same time, I'm used to filming everything. I'm a noob. I don't have any special nice equipment. I film everything with my phone. So when I'm filming something or a GoPro, so when I'm filming something, I literally just click the power button and click record and I'm going. So I just didn't expect after hearing all the reviews from like, oh, this is so portable and easy and fast. Uh, when you're new, when this is your only drone and your first drone, it's really not. You know, these guys are comparing it to like a $2,000 or $5,000 drone. And for them, it's a huge advantage and a lot faster and a lot easier. But for someone like me or you, who this is their first drone, 
Uh, it, it takes a little bit of, of dedication. You really have to want to use this to film. Uh, you're not just gonna quickly throw it up in the air and you're off. As far as the app goes, very easy to use, uh, just like I said with the controller uh, and with the drone. Everything about it is very easy and user-friendly. Uh, once you get started, at least, there's a short tutorial that it has you do. Um, I did notice that like pretty much every time I use it, it wants me to calibrate the compass, which you do like this kind of stuff. Um, you have to like rotate it like this, and then you have to rotate it like this, which I find difficult to do because I have the controller in one hand. Um, but it's not that big of a deal, but pretty much every time I fly it, it asks me to do that, and it's kind of annoying. So overall, my newbie experience with my first drone has been really good. I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. I do wish I could use it more, but again, without that active track, it's hard for me to use. Um, part of me kind of wishes I had gone with the Mavic Air, which is a step up from this one, and it does have active track, but the problem with that drone for me is I would have to get the fly more combo because it doesn't fly as long as this one. Uh, that comes with the batteries and the controller and stuff and that makes it a thousand dollars and it's just too much it's too much for me so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this one i'm trying something a little different uh if you're still watching thank you so much for that i do eventually hope to turn the channel into more of a general tech channel i will mostly be sticking with tesla for now but you will see little random tech videos here and there i love tech i'm pretty good with it i love helping people and teaching people about it when they need help um so really anything that i can do that with i would love to do um, so leave me feedback. Let me know what you thought about this. If you have any questions about this drone, things I didn't cover, leave them below. I'd love to answer them and talk to you about the drone. Um, and you will see me in the next video.